This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. FRC Premiere Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at First Updates Now slash Premiere 23. Premiere Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premiere 23. And we welcome into the Open Alliance show 3636 Generals coming in from uh, PNW competing in weeks two and four guys thank you so much for coming out we're gonna be talking about uh, a lot of stuff here uh your priorities prototyping testing uh you got a, a, a big piece of robot right on your table and right behind you so can't wait to learn more about what's going on why don't you guys introduce yourselves let us know what you do on the team and we'll hop right into it uh hi i'm silas uh i'm the team captain and a programming lead hi i'm ari i'm the cad lead this year well, uh, like I said, a lot of stuff on the table right now, and we got, uh, I know, a screen share to bring up with your cat as well, too. Uh, but let's talk about uh, your priorities list and, and how you kind of approached uh, the charged up season. So why don't you walk us through what you've been working on and, and how that's been uh, been going so far? Yeah, so the first thing that we did this year after kickoff was write down a priorities list. Um, and we decided this year that our main priorities were going to be fast cycles and mid-scoring. Um, and so we've been designing our robot to pick up intake really fast and um, outtake onto the mid rungs or, or mid nodes really fast. Yeah, uh, as well as the fact that high scoring is right after that. So this design right here is capable of scoring on the high rung or on the high nodes, as well as uh, <clears throat> limit precision needed to intake game pieces, which is why this claw, let's see, claw here has a wide expansion range of roughly, what, 14 inches between the two rollers and adjustable open and close works well with both cubes and cones. Have the prototype right here. And yeah, uh, we wanted to prioritize simplicity in this design as well as, uh, like minimize like systems which is why we don't have like pneumatics driving this it's driven by gears hooked up by u550 on a planetary overall yeah there's a lot of talk about like degrees of freedom in the open alliance i've been no stranger to seeing that and we went with a two degree of freedom design uh one degree is a rise and the second degree as a wrist and this design right now allows us to pick up from the human player station um, and on the ground, even if it's tipped over, because we can pivot the wrist downwards to intake. That's what I was going to ask you guys, looking at your your initial priorities list that you have on there. Uh, you know, without going through all of them in a laundry list on there, was intaking from the ground uh, and also from the human player station, was that like number one priority or where does that lie? Like what, what was like the number one thing your team really wanted to accomplish? I mean, we expected that, like, uh, human, the human player station, like the dual human player station where the cones are handed out on what's basically a bank teller, that's what we've been calling it, <laughs> All right. is it's going to be quite crowded or uh, high congestion. So the option to be able to pick up the cones from the ground would be quite nice if everyone is lining up to take from the human player station. So with your with your wrist, you know, you say that you can pick them up from the side, right? Is that is that something yeah. that you think is going to be a big advantage for you if others can't do that? And we were just talking to another team that was like, hey, we're just going to ignore cones if they're not uh, standing straight up. Do you see that as a strategic advantage? I mean, we've been thinking about how like the like the matches would play out, and uh, <clears throat> I mean, judging how matches go, like lots of things happen. It could either be that it's all organized and Everyone's flying into the human's player station, taking the cones from the teller and depositing them under nodes, or there's going to be cones like on the ground everywhere. And uh, having that ability to be able to pick them up while they're on the ground is uh, opens up 
quite a few possibilities and gives us more room. Yeah, being able to, to be score. flexible for our alliance members so we can play any role really. And so you, so you have, you, you know, we talked about, you, you talked about degrees of freedom, right? And I think that's, that's a big conversation that, like you said, has been going on. Um, there's a lot of teams right now that are doing tons of degrees of freedom on their robot. Um, with robots now, the more degrees of freedom you have, the, the more controls you need to make sure that they're good. What, do you have anything specific in regards to the controls of how you're going to, you know, align this or their pre-positions or sensors built in or, what are you doing to, you know, make the most of your several degrees of freedom that you've got? Now, I had this vision where this would act as somewhat of a virtual four bar that also acts as a wrist as like to keep the cones slash game pieces uh, parallel to the ground that has the option to be maneuvered up and down. This is going to be limited to it's like that's the L3 scoring zone. Uh, I don't have a configuration place for L2, but it's like, well, it's like roughly over here somewhere and from stowed. So it's really only two points of control. And there could, you want to talk about yeah, puzzle we'll, presets or? We'll most likely have uh, buttons on a controller to switch to those presets, and then the robot will automatically. Uh, put the arm as fast as it can to one of those presets. So yeah, we'll have a button on the controller to do high, low, mid. Yeah, I, I love that virtual four bar controllable, controllable wrist. I think that's super, super clever. Uh, if you can get that up and running in code, I think that that's gonna be really slick um, in terms of positioning. But then, and that solves a problem, which is basically like you said, removing that extra degree of freedom of that like extra arm joint or something to 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 do it so i think that's incredibly cool um how about we talk about some of the prototypes on the table i love seeing like the cad but also yeah. you've got all these physical you know uh hand candy so show us the hand you're candy. going to talk about cad so much so we see the what's on the table right so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well this is like the first iteration of the claw that works with cones and also works with cubes, holds them pretty well. I've had a video in the open alliance of me just like shaking it like crazy. And it took quite a lot of effort for it to shoot the cone out. And one additional uh, advantage of a system like this would be if your driver practice is good enough and your tuning is good enough, you could possibly shoot the cubes or maybe even the cones into the nodes. Have you tried and doing something like that yet? Tried doing something like that? Not, not yet, but we plan to, we plan to mess with it a lot when we get this mounted on that. Uh, speaking cool. of which, we were talking uh, pre-show, since you mentioned it behind you, I do want to ask. We were talking pre-show that you guys have been working hard all day to get that up and running behind you. Can, can we jump into that and then we'll talk about the other intake? Yeah, it's, this is, somewhat of an alpha bot we designed or we put this together with the intent of like messing with gear ratios and the controllability of the arm, how fast it goes up and down and center of mass and such. Uh, we got a charging station in the other part of the school and we're going to be messing with center of gravity and all that. So yeah, just, yeah, we started today with just a drive train and now we've got a frame built on it with the arm to test. Um, arm positioning and get that like the preset buttons that we're talking about working. That's pretty impressive, guys. Get all that up uh, today. Uh, so nice, nice work on that. Is there is there one member on your team that constantly wears the cone on their head? That says oh, it's on oh, it. so <laughs> someone wrote that on there like earlier today. Yeah, uh, mm, hasn't been caught on anyone's head yet, yet. So yeah. Just for the show, we feel so special. Uh, how about the other take, other intake uh, that you had in front of you, or at least yeah. uh, all those rulers? Tell us more about that. This is a, a second intake design that we came up with. Um, saw it on the Open Alliance, and it the idea was that it, with it is you have two different intake or yeah, two different places to hold game pieces. You got cubes can go here, and the cones, cones can be pinched like here. 
pinch around this. So if we were able to, let's say, mount something similar like this on the arm and have it rotate like rotationally and be able to pick up the cone by the rim, uh, we saw some testing by, what was it, team 2158, I believe, where uh, they have a design where it would roll over the cone and it would grab the lip either forwards or backwards. And it would orient the cone, even if it, the cone was sideways. Yeah, so it's pretty, like, pretty fast, touch it, own it, like, just run up to a cone or a cube and just, it grabs on and you can run over and score it, flip it back and forth, as well as that flipping could also, like, <laughs> add room to be able to have, like, could also double as a cone or a cube mode, where it's, like, up in one side for cones and you flip it over and you're able to imitate cubes like, like this or something like that. Got it. So you're, you're playing with something else that you could potentially just bolt to the same wrist as the, as the claw that you're, you're moving forward with. Yeah, that's the intent of being able to mount to the same sort of box tube and be able to, uh, be an option if it proves better because we really want to focus on minimizing driver precision needed because precision and coordination is like such a huge part of this game like being able to score those uh game pieces onto those nodes because you have to put the cone on a stick basically right. and like i mean i i think it's also it, what's interesting is that like a lot of people are talking about precision when it talks to scoring but you're scoring right in front of yourself Right. I think the pickup on the other side is actually maybe the harder part, especially that's, that's if you're trying to pick true. up off yeah. the, off the uh, bank teller window or um, the floor. You know, so that's I, I'm in full agreement. I think that you know more compliant intakes and you know things that are don't require tight precision are probably going to speed up people's cycles. So I think you're on the right track there. On the topic of precision, you want to talk about like vision. Oh yeah, so we've been working on trying to get a Limelight 3, which they've been out of stock for so long. Um, and until we get one, we're moving forward with Photon Vision and an Orange Pi. Um, and that's been working pretty well for us. We've been got full 3D positioning on the robot and tr figuring out how to integrate that with scoring so that we can press a button and drive up and score. When you're looking at uh, from a, a match overall uh, on having that is uh, where do you kind of draw that? Like, cause I know you said you want to have uh, you know, the driver not as not needed to have as much precision, but like when you're looking at a full match, you're like, do you want everything to be automated from like your, your collection uh, to everything like where you're just seeing it and the robots automatically grabbing it or where does the driver or the operator step into that process when you're looking at uh, competing in a match? I think it'll be a mix, but the driver will mainly control getting back and forth between the um, the human player station and the scoring nodes, um, and then deciding where to put the cones because you gotta organize for the links and coordinate with your teammates. But then the robot will be able to handle putting it onto the node by itself because that's something that is precise and can be done the same. You just have to do the same thing every time, and that's what a robot does does best. Before we start to wrap up, were there any other uh, uh, prototypes or anything else that you wanted to show off? And if not, uh, what is kind of the next steps for uh, 3636? Yeah, well, I mean, we got this here. This is a Maxworth module, and we have been messing with these like quite heavily. And we are looking to that as an option of once again, being able to like minimize precision and like make it easier to align yourself and faster recycles. Yeah. We got a charging pad and a um, node and scoring stations built, and we've been testing with Swerve and uh, Kit Apart's drive chain on all of those, seeing how they go up and down the charging station and driving them off the charging station from the side and seeing uh, how much abuse they can take. Um, and yeah, deciding what's the best drive chain to go with this year. Have you guys done a sword drive in the past before, or would this be your first time? No, we actually quite like we bit the bullet pretty hard and um, started messing with these like rather recently. And I mean, we got them working. So, so and we're, what are your thoughts? Yeah, 
we, I mean, we got Swerve run, working from out of the box to spinning figure eights in uh, just under 30 hours, which was pretty amazing for Max Swerve and uh, how far Kid Apart or Caught Swerve has come. Um, but yeah, we're, we're still trying to decide if it's going to be viable for us this year, since we haven't done Swerve in the past, if we can pull it off this year. Well, 3636 Generals, uh, of course, we wish you the best uh, looking forward. We're going to have you back on here in just three short weeks. Uh, but, of course, uh, make sure you check out uh, Generals on, uh, of course, the Open Alliance, both on Discord and also on Chief Delphi, so you can see what their progress is going to be. And, guys, just wish you the best of luck. Thanks for taking the time, and uh, can't wait to see you back on here in just three short weeks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. FRC Premier Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at first updates now slash Premier 23. Premier Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premier 23. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.